All right, so hello. This is a recording of a virtual tour for College for Creative Studies. I'm Madeline, I'm gonna be the tour guide for tonight. I am majoring in illustration, minoring in art history, just a little bit of my background. So what we're looking at right now is the Ford campus. We do have two campus sites. This is our Ford campus. Um, the Tottenham Center campus is only a mile away down Woodward. So, and we do have a 24 seven shuttle service that goes over there as well. Um, but what we're looking at right now is the Oval. So this is in the middle of the Ford campus. This is where a lot of students like to hang out. Uh, we have a sculpture garden here. This is curated with the Detroit Institute of Art, the DIA, which is right across the street over here. And CCS students get free access to the DIA, which is great. My friends and I like to go over there and do little sketches and studies. So that's a great resource we have. We are also surrounded by a bunch of museums as well. So um, those are also great resources too. Over here, we have the WB Ford building. So this is where we have our education, illustration, entertainment arts, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we can just keep going. So here's another view of the Ford campus. Over here, you can see the Kresge Ford building. So that's where we have art practice, crafts, liberal arts. And then again, over here, the WB. So we'll take a look at these pictures down here. All right, so just another view of campus. Here you can see students hanging out in the stone chairs in the middle of the Ford campus in the middle of the oval. That's a place where lots of students like to hang out. Sometimes clubs meet there too. And then a view of Peacock Palooza. So our mascot is Watson Peacock. That's why it's called Peacock Palooza. But Peacock Palooza happens at the beginning of each year during um, welcome week. So it's a great opportunity to make friends. There's sidewalk chalk drawings. Sometimes we have raffles and um, we just have a good time. It's just like a nice time to get outside and meet people, get out of your dorm, meet people, make friends, that sort of thing. So that's an opportunity we have here too. It's a good mingling sesh. All right, so here we have the WB Ford building. This building houses our education, foundations work, as well as illustration and entertainment art. So we'll go over each of those briefly. Um, here we have our education. Our education is treated as a double major. So you take our education studios as well as your major studios. So in our education, it does change your four-year program into a five-year program with the fifth year your student teaching around local schools. So in our education, with our education, once you finish, you are certified to teach K through 12 in Michigan. And then you take a test, teach K through 12 anywhere in the US, which is a really great opportunity. A lot of students use this as backup or if they need a little bit more time to focus on what their ultimate career goals are, our education is a great opportunity for that. We also have 100% job placement with our education as well. So that's always available for students. Next, we have our foundations department in this building. Foundations are required of every student at CCS. They're basic drawing, composition, basic art classes that really teach all the students, give them all fundamental level. So everybody's on the same page, basically. Um, they teach you the fundamentals of art, fundamentals and principles of art and design. So that's what foundations classes basically are. We start with classes like foundation drawing, which is learning how to transfer something you're looking at onto a piece of paper using charcoal. We have digital fundamentals, which is a class where you learn how to use both Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. You get the entire Adobe suite for free on your personal laptop, which is a great bonus. We have classes where you learn how to use both the wood shop and the metal shop. You learn how to weld. So there's lots of different experiences with foundations and everybody gets pretty much the same experience too, no matter what major you're in. So everybody, is in this together for foundations classes. All right, next we'll take a look at these pictures down here. So this is another view of the WB at night. And then we also have the production studios in here. So the production stages is production studios slash stage area is mostly useful for digital film and photography majors but it's open to anybody you can check out any of these spaces for free with all this equipment and lighting 
um, open up to anybody at all. And you check this out using the Audio Visual Center, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But we also have a green room available and a white infinity wall with tons of different lighting scenarios that you can use. So that's all available. We also have a small auditorium in this building. This is usually used for department meetings for illustration and entertainment arts, but we do have clubs that meet in here. I'm in CCS Strengths. I meet with my club in here. We play our orchestra instruments in here. We also have a bad movie club that watches movies, bad movies. And then we have like D&D, &D, Magic the Gathering. Um, we have a comic book club. We have a Christian club. We have LGBTQ plus club. So there's lots of different clubs at CCS and it's super easy to start your own too. Next up we have the Audiovisual Center which I briefly mentioned uh, like a minute ago. So the Audiovisual Center is basically a technological library. So we have lots of equipment more than what's shown in this picture. We have lighting equipment, cameras, we have drawing tablets like Cintiq tablets, Wacom tablets, Intuos tablets. We have um, Let's see, tripods, cameras, lighting, tons of different like technology stuff um, available just to check out for free for three days. You can renew it for another three days. Um, so there's tons and tons of equipment in here and they're constantly updating and recycling stuff. So there's always new goodies to check out. And yeah, totally free for students to check out. And plus, cool thing about the Audiovisual Center is they don't really mind what happens to the equipment when it leaves as long as it comes back in the same condition that it left in. So potentially you could check out a projector and watch movies over the weekend. That's what my roommates and I did over this past school year and that was really nice. All right, we'll move on to illustration. So this is my major in illustration. Students do mostly drawing and painting. There's lots of different avenues you can go through with illustration. You can go into editorial, so magazine work. You can go into gallery work. You can go into fashion illustration, pattern making, concept art. There's different avenues for different areas that students are interested in. You can go into book covers and comic books even. So um, there's lots of different paths for students to take in illustration, just depending on what you personally want to do with it. So yeah, we'll take a look at these pictures down here. I like to say that the first two years are kind of like boot camp. You're really learning the rules. You're learning the ropes. You're learning how to. And then the second two years, you are doing what you want to do. You're using, making your personal style. You're making your, um, you're making, you're creating your path the second two years. The first two years, you're kind of on a set path. The second two years, you get to do what you want. That's kind of what I think illustration is kind of like. Um, we also have these really nice antique drawing tablets for students in illustration to use. We have lots of computer labs for students. And we also have live models as well. Usually they're nude. Um, in this situation, you're not. But so students are surrounding a model drawing. That's typical scenario and illustration. We do have an illustration hallway that starts with freshman level work and goes all the way down to senior level work. So the freshman level work, you can see more of the basic charcoal drawings, more charcoal, more structured stuff. And then once you get down here to more junior senior level work, you get to see how they're really branching off into their different er like areas, avenues that they're interested in. So yeah, you can really see the various styles of each particular student, which is really cool. Then we have a just a picture of a regular illustration studio. So this is a typical setup, the models in the middle, and then we have these students sitting around them. All the drawing horses and easels and that sort of thing are, pro are provided to students as well. So you don't have to invest in like these um, drawing horses or these easels or anything. We have those provided for you. So next up we have entertainment arts. Entertainment arts has four concentrations, concept, digital film, game, and animation. Concept is actually our newest concentration. It's overseen by Tim Flattery, who we're very happy to have here at CCS. He is a proficient Hollywood concept artist. So he's designed things like Marvel Infinity Gauntlet. He's designed a Batmobile. He's worked on the Hunger Games. So he's done a lot of cool stuff and he has 
lots of connections to LA, as well as he just got promoted to the Dean of Undergraduate Studies. So we're really happy to have him at CCS and you'll probably be hearing from him a lot if you attend. Um, but yeah, he oversees concept, which is basically designing assets, designing characters, designing environments for video games and movies. So it's mostly on the computer. And then we also have game design, another concentration in entertainment arts, and they kind of go hand in hand because whereas concept designing, game design is actually 3D modeling the designs that concept makes, if that makes sense. So in um, game design, the students are 3D modeling environments, characters, and assets. And then in concept, they're just designing them. So we'll take a look at these pictures down here. We also have a green room available. This is for students to check out. It's part of the audiovisual center again with the production studios that I talked about a little bit earlier. Um, we have a whisper room available. So if you need to record audio um, for any reason at all, you can check this out and you can record high quality audio using the whisper room. We do have a stop motion studio for animation students. So students in animation are starting with pencil paper animations. They're doing paper on piece of paper on piece of paper and doing bunches of layers to make uh, characters move and make things move. They start with ball bounces and leaf drops and then they move into digital 2D animation and before they go into like 3D modeling, 3D animation as well. So that's kind of the path animation students take. Next up, we have the game design photo. So we have, again, these nice Cintiqs for students to use and they are 3D modeling. So yeah, and game design students also learn how to make video games as well. Next up, we have video editing suites. So students in digital film are learning how to be directors. They're learning how to use equipment, special equipment for being directors, for like cameras and tripods and lighting and all that good stuff, learning how to use the production studios. And they're being trained on how to think like a director, how to make movies, how to make films, how to make short films, that sort of thing. And also how to edit, uh, edit and um, process video as well. So we have these video editing suites for students and then we also have sound editing suites too. So all of that is available to students to use. Next up, we have the Kresge Ford building. So this is where we have, again, liberal arts, our practice and crafts. Um, yeah, so we'll take a look at these pictures down here. It's another view. This is a picture looking away from the parking garage. So each campus has its own parking garage that's guarded by a security guard. So that's good to know. We also have a small cafeteria on this campus as well in the Kresge Ford building. Our larger cafeteria is on the other campus, but here we have grab and go options, mac and cheese, pizza, that sort of thing. It's also a nice little hangout area in between classes. And we also have a small Starbucks here as well. A great bonus. Also places to sit. And then that is the small Starbucks. So we're gonna move on to crafts and material studies. So crafts has five concentrations, ceramics, glass, fibers and textiles, art furniture, and metal smithing and jewelry. And I'll go over each of those. Right now what we're looking at is the glass blowing studio. We do have a hot glass and a cold glass studio. What you're looking at now is the hot glass studio. So students in um, glass blowing are learning how to make vases, gallery work, as well as functional work too. They're learning how to make sculptures, they're learning how to color glass, and they're learning how to manipulate glass in various forms. So, and they do that very well here. <laughs> so let's take a look at these pictures here. So in fibers and textiles, which is what we're looking at now, students are learning pretty much everything about fabric, the ins and outs, what makes it strong, what makes the fabric weak. They're learning how to weave. They're learning how to print onto fabric, like what you see here, patterns. Um, learning how to make patterns, learning how to make their own dyes, learning how to dye fabric, learning how to sew, make clothes. So they're doing lots of different things involving fabric. And it's all pretty cool. They do screen printing as well. And we have 
sewing machines and embroidering machine available for students. We have a chemical like like a dye mixing lab too for students to use. Next up we have art furniture. So students in art furniture are kind of a mix between product design majors or product so art furniture is like a mix between product design and art practice. So they're not like Herman Miller, where Herman Miller's mass producing chairs. They're making one-off gallery pieces that are specific to what they're interested in or what a client needs or something like that. So they use the metal shop and wood shop quite frequently, getting a um, taking that 3D techniques class that I talked about earlier. And a foundations course is very helpful because then they get to use the wood shop and metal shop and they're trained on all of the machines. So that's very helpful. Um, so yeah, art furniture, pretty cool stuff, making various pieces, tables, chairs, and it's, they make functional work, but it's also experimental as well. So next up, we have another view of the hot glass studio. And then we also have blacksmithing. So we do have blacksmithing available as a class, I believe. Um, so, and anybody can take that. CCS really encourages you to take classes outside of your major. So if there's ever anything that you're interested in, as long as you have the time and you want to do it, you can totally go for it. So you can take a class in blacksmithing if you want. Usually art practice and um, craft students use the blacksmithing studio. We do have a ceramic studio, of course. We have lots of ceramic spaces for students in ceramics. So students in ceramics are learning wheel throwing. They're learning how to make sculptures. They're learning how to make structurally sound sculptures. They're learning how to glaze, learning how to build their own wood fire kiln, which is pretty cool. Um, they're learning how to fire their designs. They're learning how to make sculptures of people as well. So they're doing lots of different stuff in ceramics. And it's nice because it's a concentration in ceramics. So that's what you're going to be doing for all four years, which is just amazing. Just learning the ins and outs of the specific thing that you're interested in, in this case, ceramics, which is just great. Uh, next up, we have the jewelry studio. So students in metalsmithing and jewelry are making earrings, necklaces, bracelets, even small vases in some cases. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is one of their studio spaces where they're doing very meticulous little, they do lots of little work on, well, because it's jewelry and that's pretty small. So they do things like engraving, they can change the color of metal with heat and chemicals. They do a lot of metal work. Um, they do, let's see. Um, stone setting is another thing that they do, wire wrapping as well, so working with precious gems and metals is something they do, um, learning how to manipulate metal is something that they learn as well, so that's all stuff that they're learning in metal smithing and jewelry. Here's another view of ceramics, so just some glazing, and then the outdoor kiln. All right, next up, we're going to move on to art practice. Previously, fine arts, we renamed it to art practice and being a little more inclusive because when you think of fine art, you think of, well, sometimes you think of old European guys, oil paintings and museums, and of course it's welcome, but we wanna be more inclusive to students and if they wanna make, um, in regards to if they wanna make artwork based on their culture or their ethnic background or anything, that's totally welcome here. We just wanna make that known to students. So here we have printmaking. Students in art practice are doing pretty much everything from printmaking to sculpture, to drawing, to painting, to blacksmithing, to working in the foundry. So even glass work sometimes. So there's lots of different stuff that students in art practice are doing. It's more experimental gallery work as opposed to something like illustration, which might be working for a company or something like that. Um, so this is one of their painting studios. We also have a newly renovated sculpture garage for students to bring in big pieces as well as mixed plaster and cement, of course, fully ventilated. Safety is like number one priority. We also have letterpress and printmaking studios as well. So this is something students in art practice learn. Just more general studio space, critique space. There's lots of different studios available for students in, um, in all the majors, but 
in art practice, there's lots of variety as well. And then we have the foundry where they do cool metal pours like this. So, and something also to note is that the classes at CCS are pretty small. In some cases, they can be only four kids. Um, sometimes they're 20 kids, sometimes they're four kids, which means that you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your professors. So I know in some art practice classes, there's only four or five kids in the class and they become really tight with their professors. They get their professor's phone number and like it's just helpful to have that in case you have any last minute questions or anything. Um, so yeah, and you make connections with your professors that way, which is really nice. And it's nice to know that um, you have somebody who you can come back to probably years later and they still know who you are. So that's just something cool that I've noticed after being here. Next up, we have dorm, a dorm building. So this is the Art Center building, also known as the ACB. This is where I've lived during my time at CCS. Um, this is more apartment style dorms. This is where we have four and six person rooms. There are two in one person, one and two person rooms, but those are reserved for seniors, graduate students, and RAs, that sort of thing. So yes, let's take a look. Um, we do have a gallery space here as well. It's a student gallery. The show changes every once in a while. Um, we do have a mail room in this building for students to pick up mail as well as, um, so in each room, I should probably say, uh, there is, um, so in the four person rooms, there are two bedrooms, two people per room, a full kitchen, a full bathroom, and a full living space with a couch and a coffee table. Um, lots of space for desks as well. You can loft your bed and put your desk underneath if that's what you're into. You can bunk your beds. There's lots of different options. Um, and you can bring your own microwave. You can bring coffee machine, that sort of stuff. Dishes, of course. That's, um, but you get a bar or a island, which is nice too. Um, in the six person rooms, you have three bedrooms, two people per room, two bathrooms, and then a full kitchen, full living space. The couch is a little bit bigger in the six person dorms and the couches um, are separatable. Like they're, <clears throat> you can take it apart, move it however you want basically. So that's pretty cool. Um, sectional, I should say, sectional couches. Um, but that is the dorm here. Um, and then we also, again, as I said, we have a mail room in this building where you pick up packages, mailboxes where you get your letters. We also have laundry on even numbered floors. And then we have trash on the first floor. There is a gym in this building as well that's open to commuter students too. So you don't have to live here in order to use the building. If you're a commuter student, you can use the workout room in this building. It's just through the entrance of the, through the lobby here. Um, let's see. And... Yeah, I think that's pretty much that. So we do have um, a workroom in this building as well, I should say. So there is space to work in this building if you don't wanna work inside your dorm. Um, so we'll move on to the Yamasaki building. The Yamasaki building is basically the student services hub. So this is where we have financial aid. This is where we have the business office, um, the wellness center. So we do have a nurse practitioner here who can prescribe you medicine if you need it. Um, and that's totally free of charge. Visiting the nurse practitioner is totally free of charge. We have counselors at the wellness center too, totally free of charge, totally confidential. Highly recommend um, the wellness center. They're very nice. Um, yeah, and the counselors are really helpful. Even if you just need a little bit help with time management, you can totally just go over there. They do have walk-in hours, so you don't have to be a registered client in order to see them. Um, we do have a small bookstore in this building as well, which is helpful if you forget something during class, you can just pop on over to the bookstore and grab it real quick. Um, we do have the academic advising office in this building. So that is where you would go to make your schedule, meet with your advisor, talk about different things. Um, so yeah, that is basically the Yamasaki building. Lots of different services happen in this building and pretty much all of the offices that you're going to need in regards to financial aid and academic advising is in this building. Next up we have photography. So photography is back in the Kresge Ford building um, in the basement. 
So this is photography. Students are learning both traditional and digital methods. So they're learning how to develop film as well as learning how to use fancy cameras and lighting and equipment. Um, they learn how to edit their photos as well. They learn all the ins and outs of all the different sorts of cameras, all different lenses. So they can do advertising photography, experimental photography, gallery work. They can do fashion photography is probably what you're seeing here. So there's lots of different avenues in photography as well. Um, so you don't have to narrow yourself down to just one, just like I'm just in photography. It's like there's so many different avenues in photography in regards to whatever you're interested in. So down here, we have the Daylight Studio. So this is available for students, different backdrops, that sort of thing. Um, we also have lots of dark rooms available for students as well. We have the stage slash production studios, which I mentioned earlier. It's also available for students um, in photography. And then we have a classroom sized darkroom wet lab for a whole class of students to develop film all at once, which is pretty cool. We do have a mat cutting room, which is just next to this as well. So students learn how to cut their own mats. And then um, learning how to use all different programs as well for photography. So that's what students in photography are doing. And then we also, CCS encourages students to go outside of campus to work on assignments. So you're not just stuck on campus um, to work on your homework. You can go off of campus every once in a while, live it up. So <laughs> next up we have the Manugian Visual Resource Center. This is basically the school's library. We do have our traditional library here as well as our color and materials library. So the traditional library, of course, just a room full of books basically. Um, this is an art school, so a lot of it's art based. So we have art books, we have comic books, graphic novels. We have DVDs and movies and of course history books and books on all the different majors here and that sort of thing. We do have quiet study rooms in the Manugin as well if you need to write an essay or something. Um, the color and materials library is basically a room of samples of different fabric and materials. So students in most of the design majors like fashion design, interior design, product design, that sort of thing can go in there and pick out the material that they want their products to be made out of. And then the librarian will help them figure out where to purchase those materials. Um, and they focus a lot on sustainability, being eco-friendly, being green in the color materials library. So a lot of the stuff there is sustainable. They know where it comes from. And that's really important to students at CCS is being green and eco-friendly. Um, we also have the prop and costume room here in the Minogian Visual Resource Center. So the prop and costume room is basically a room full of objects from vases to animal props. We have costumes from boiler suits to Renaissance costumes. So there's lots of variety here and you can check out pretty much any of that. Well, you can check out any of that stuff for free. And as long as you say you bring it back, when you say you'll bring it back, there's no, um, there's no fee for it. And yeah, you can also hire out a model from the prop and costume room as well. You can request a specific model, request a specific type of model and dress them up in the costumes that you checked out, give them the props, take them to the, to the production studios, take really nice pictures of them. And then that way you have a really great reference photo for paintings or something. So I've used this resource before. You have really, it gives you really great reference for paintings and drawings and, or if you need it for photography or digital film or anything. So the prop and costume room is a great resource we have here. We also have a gallery space in this building as well. We have a faculty gallery space and then I think like a semi-permanent show is what we have in here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head a mile away from the Ford campus. We're heading over to the other campus, which is the Taubman Center. Again, we do have a, a 24 seven shuttle service. I think I briefly mentioned that earlier. We do have a 24 seven shuttle service that takes you in between campuses 24 seven. If it's ever not there, you just call the security office and they'll send somebody to come pick you up. But now we're heading over to the Tom and Center, a mile away, a mile up Woodward, I believe. So here we are, we're a mile away now. All of the, the dorm and the academic part of campus is in this building. So on this campus, the dorms and the classes are all in this one building. Shinola, the watch company, also owns a couple floors in this building. And then we also do have a middle school and a high school that's in this building, but we'd rarely ever see them. 
So with that said, let's just get started into the Talman Center. So this is more of an industrial building. Um, it previously was a GM research center. So it was built in 1928. It's pretty old, um, but we have renovated it. It was donated to CCS. We renovated it in 2009. So all of the insides is new now. It's all nice. It's, um, it's still pretty industrial, but that's just kind of the look of it. Um, yeah, so that is the Taubman Center. There's a couple remnants left over from when it was a GM research center, like our car size spray booth that I'll talk about later, as well as our freight elevator. So it's just little fun things like that that make it an interesting building. Um, so first off, we have the bookstore. The bookstore is, this is our main bookstore. It's our largest bookstore on campus. This is where you would get all of your supplies and textbooks. Um, so, with regards to supplies, it, it varies depending on your major, of course, but um, any pretty much all of the supplies that you need are gonna be in the bookstore. If they're ever not there, you can tell the cashier and they can order it to the bookstore for you. Or another option is there is a Blick art store down Woodward that you can go to if the bookstore is ever closed or they don't have something that you need. So we have lots of merch here as well and just little trinkets and gifts and stuff, which is pretty cute. So. Um, we also have the cafeteria on this campus. Um, this is the large cafeteria, so this is where a lot of students will be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's kind of like high-end fast food is what I'd rate it, I guess, um, but you go up and you order the food and then they make it for you and then they give it to you, kind of like the whole deal. We have lots of variety in this cafeteria, more than the cafeteria on the other campus. So we have burgers, hot dogs, we have vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free options. We have specials of the day, sometimes we have fish. We have deli sandwiches. You can customize your sandwiches, of course. Um, we have a coffee bar, we have grab-and-go options, we have prepackaged salads and desserts. We also have, um, let's see, snacks, of course, beverages and coolers, that sort of thing. We have a soup and salad bar. So there's lots of different options here for students and it's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so that is the cafeteria. Then we have housing in this building. So the dorms in this building are more kind of traditional style dorms. They're still pretty large, um, but the beds and the furniture are all in the same room. So like the beds and the wardrobes and couch and the coffee table and that sort of thing are all in the same room. Um, one thing that is very important to note if you live in the Taubman Center is that you are required to have a meal plan because you do not have a full kitchen in this dorm. So you are required to have a meal plan so you eat. <laughs> so in the other dorms you have a full kitchen so you aren't required to have a meal plan but here you do not. So that is where um, the meal plan comes in. Um, all of the furniture is renovated. All the furniture is new as of a couple years ago, so it's a little bit different than what's pictured here, but each student gets their own wardrobe, set of drawers, their own bed, twin size beds. Um, the windows open in this dorm building, which is nice. Um, there's space for a couple mini fridges, there's space for microwaves, just no open coils in this building is what they request. Um, there is a hotel style bathroom, so the toilet and shower are separate from the sinks, which is nice. And then there's lots of um, storage space. There's a loft space for storage as well. So that's the housing on this campus. Um, we do have a gym, of course, in this building for students to use, as well as a mail room. Um, and let's see. Yeah, there's lots of workspaces as well in the housing side of this building. Lots of workspaces for students. So you don't have to work in your dorm if you don't want to especially with all the furniture in there and stuff. It might get a little bit crowded. Um, all right, so let's see, look down here. Um, this is the entrance to the building. And then this is the color materials library. We'll probably see this picture a few more times. The color materials library, again, is what I mentioned earlier. It did move to the other campus. So um, yeah, this is, It'll look a little bit different, but still all the same content. And then there is a gallery space in this building as well, of course. We're going to skip over graduate studies and we're going to move on to advertising design. So advertising students, they are learning how to be art directors. They're learning how to probably work for a company, um, making advertisements from billboards to 
TV commercials, making storyboards for commercials, um, learning about typography, learning about graphic design, learning about photo manipulation, that sort of thing. It's pretty collaborative as well. Um, and students are uh, learning about social media too, which is pretty cool. Um, because that's becoming more and more relevant, of course. It's been relevant for a little while, but social media is a great way to advertise. Um, so another thing to note about this building is that the classrooms aren't really traditional style classrooms. They're kind of open like this. Everything's pretty movable with malleable. It's movable, malleable. We have moved these movable walls that separate the different classrooms, which is nice, especially um, when something like COVID happens. So you can make things really spread out and a little bit safer that way. I wish you could see this entire wall here because our advertising students are very successful in entering competitions. There's tons of trophies on this wall as well as certificates. Um, and I really wish you could see all of them, but you just have to take my word for it that they're very successful in competitions that they enter. And then just a picture of a student presentation. So yeah, learning how to communicate through um, advertising as well as something that they learn. And it's a little bit different than communication design, which I'll talk about in a minute, but they learn how to use typography. They learn how to use graphic design to communicate a message, but it's through advertising. Whereas, um, I guess I'll talk about communication now, but um, communication design is more about taking a complex message, simplifying it for the public to understand. So something like this poster back here, like a poster for a special event, that needs to be clearly understood. It needs, this, the person needs to know where it is, when it is, why it's happening, as well as the poster has to be graphically interesting, needs to pull you in, but needs to communicate that message fairly well. So it has to be a good balance. Um, and that's what students in communication design are learning how to do. Learning typography, learning graphic design, motion design. So the intro of a title sequence to a movie or a video game is something that, um, or a video game or TV show, that sort of thing. That's what they do. Um, we also have, um, they design web interfaces, they design websites, they design apps as well. So anything that really has to do with communicating a message to somebody that needs to be clearly understood is what communication students are working on, which is a lot of different things. Um, we have interaction design as well. We do have an interaction lab that students that we have available for students, which I'll show you in a second here. Let's look at these pictures. So again, a uh, classroom here, pretty movable, malleable walls. Um, we have, this is our interaction lab. We do have virtual reality as well, which is pretty neat. And then um, a typography exhibit. So again, typography is very important in communication and advertising design. Um, it's a critical way that people communicate, which makes sense. <laughs> So that is communication. We're gonna move on to fashion design. So fashion design students are learning how to make clothing, purses, um, bags, shoes, just like general apparel. Um, they learn marketing as well, which is very important. Learning how to market your work is like crucial. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, they have special shoemaking classes, learning how to make um, purses and gloves and all that good stuff. And they start with, most of these design majors start with hand drafting and then they move on to rendering they make mood boards and that sort of thing. It's all very process based. And then they make the final product. So it's not like you just jump into it right away. It's a process. Um, so yeah, Shinola, the watch company that owns a couple floors in this building, they have donated fabric, like leather to CCS students before. So there's kind of like some interplay there, which is cool. Um, and then students in fashion use that leather to, for their projects. So this is just a classroom. Would they learn how, for students in fashion learn how to use these industrial sewing machines, which is pretty neat. Um, they have shoemaking classes. So they are actually making shoes and stuff, which is awesome. And they do sell their work sometimes too. They have their own laser cutter. And then this is just a general overview of all of the, the big room that they have, um, with all the sewing machines. And then again, the color materials library. So students in fashion might go to the color materials library to figure out what they want their designs to be made out of. Um, 
yeah, and then the librarian will help them figure out where to locate that material to purchase it. Again, eco-friendly, sustainable, that's what they're focusing on here at CCS is um, being sustainable. Another cool thing about fashion design is that Calvin Klein actually chooses a couple students every year for an internship over the summer from fashion ex or fashion design. So that is a great opportunity for students in fashion to intern with Calvin Klein. Next up, we have interior design. So interior design students aren't just putting furniture in a room. They're designing look and feel of a space while keeping in mind the function. So they design anything from retail spaces to home interiors to classrooms to libraries to tons of different things even car interiors as you can see in the back here um, and then again you can see the student putting up these little samples of fabric that they probably got from the color materials library so they might go to the students in interiors and might go to the color materials library to figure out what the rooms that they're designing will look like what they will be what, the, what they'll feel like what they'll be made out of basically what the wallpaper will look like all that good stuff um, they start with hand drafting, of course, and then they move on to rendering. So they have special programs. Students in interior design have special programs that they use to render their designs to make them look realistic. Um, here are the large drafting tables that we have available for students in interior design. So learning how to be a good draftsman is really important before you move on to rendering. Um, forgive my making noise all of a sudden um, and then again the color materials library so this is a great resource for students in these design majors students in fashion or in interior design sorry also have a great opportunity to travel around the world to like new york and milan even um, for to experience interior design like firsthand um, which is pretty amazing just traveling like that to go in in your specific area of interest even. <laughs> um, next up we have product design. So students in product design are designing anything basically from helmets to medical equipment to shoes to kitchen utensils and each semester they're given a prompt. So something like kitchen utensils they might be given a prompt for. They do a bunch of research into kitchen utensils. They find something they see a design problem with and they design it better. That's their whole slogan. Um, lots of critical thinking problem solving happens in product design. Um, they have, they start with hand drafting, of course, again, they move on to 3D rendering their designs and then um, sometimes they actually make them, which is pretty cool. Um, they do a lot of research in product design based on the specific prompt each semester. So it's very research based, very research heavy. Um, yeah, so we'll take a look at these down here. So again, starting with hand drafting is very important, learning how to control pencil and paper, learning how to communicate your idea through pencil and paper is very important. Even during like nowadays where everything is digital, you still have to start with pencil and paper. Um, again, the pretty malleable classrooms, um, we have Okay, sorry about that. Um, we have nice drawing techniques again for students to use in product design. Um, and lots of computer space, lots of studio space for students. And in the hallways, if you ever visit, um, we do have boards filled with work from students in all of the hallways that are just really great examples of what students are doing here at CCS. And then just another picture of the Color Materials Library. <laughs> So the last major we have to talk about is transportation design. Transportation might be what CCS is most well known for because we are in Detroit. We do have the big three here. Um, but students in transportation aren't just designing cars. They're designing anything that moves. So boats, planes, even um, construction vehicles, too. So there's lots of different avenues. Again, it's not just the one thing you can do. You can branch out to whatever you're particularly interested in, which is amazing. Um, students in transportation design start with hand drafting, of course, they move on to rendering their designs and then they actually make these little models of cars, which is pretty cool. That's probably what people are really interested in when they look at transportation design. Um, transportation students have their own rapid prototyping lab. That's where they have wood shop tools so they can cut foam. So 
to make the car designs and then they put the clay on top and then they spray paint it and make it look all nice. Um, so let's take a look at these pictures down here. So yeah, this is the rapid prototyping studio. Um, we have space for students to carve foam, students to cut foam, students to cut clay even. We have CNC machines here, I believe. We have 3D printers here. Those are available to anybody, by the way, not just transportation students. Um, so yeah, next up we have the car size spray booth that I briefly mentioned earlier because this used to be a GM research center in the building. Um, so there are remnants of that left over, the, this being one of them. Students can spray their designs in here. And we do have a professional spray painter come in, I believe, every semester at the end of each semester. But the line does go all the way down the hallway for students to get their designs sprayed. So it is beneficial to learn how to spray yourself. Um, here you can see these high quality renderings back here and then the actual design next to it. So that's just a typical setup. And then um, you can see these really high quality models here that are just baffling to me. Um, and that's what you learn how to do in transportation design, which is pretty amazing. And with your own car designs or transportation designs as well. Um, back here, this Lincoln sign, I'd like to point out sponsored studios. So sponsored studios are Basically, they can happen to any major. They happen most often to transportation design, I believe. Um, but what happens is a company like Lincoln will come in, give students a design challenge. Students get real world experience with that company, real world experience in their area of interest. They can possibly get networking connections that way as well. It's just a great opportunity for students to get experience with a actual company that they may want to work for someday. So that is sponsored studios. Um, and I believe that is the end of the tour. So that's all I have to talk about today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed and I have been your tour guide. So thank you very much for allowing me to do this and have a wonderful day.